Welcome back to another video. Hope you all are doing good. Some of you have commented to make a video on automating Google Classroom for daily updating links. In this video I'm going to do that for you. So let's get started. Problem is the Google Classroom Meet Links changes many times as teachers updates it. Hence pre-saved Gmeet links won't work. In order to solve this problem, I'm going to use the Google Classroom API. Go to the link given in the description below. Click on the Get OAuth Client ID button. Wait until it prompts Select or Create Project. Give a name to this project and click Next. You will be prompted to give your product a name. After entering your product name hit Enter. After that you have to specify where you are calling the API from. We are going to call it from the desktop so select from desktop option and hit enter. Wait until it shows client configuration and download client configuration to the folder where you store the code. Now click on Python. Copy the command and paste it in the terminal which will install Google client library. It will take some time to install based on your PC configuration. After that install Pi Auto GUI. Copy this code shown in the quickstart.py file. Open your working directory where you stored your credentials in a code editor. Create a getlinks.py file and paste the code and run it. You will be prompted to a page where you have to sign in with your Google account which has the access to your Google Classroom. Press Allow. You need to do this only once. Close the window and go back and you can see that the courses that you registered in are displayed. To change the number of courses that should be returned, you can change the page size according to the courses. We can see that an extra subject is returned as I have changed page size to 11. Make map.py file. In order to make names of the subject simple, let's make the alias names for the subjects. Let's make a course alias dictionary where the course names from our classroom are mapped to the alias names that we give to the classes. Copy the subjects that are printed and pasted here. We have to use these names to map them to alias. Give simple and unique alias names for each subject. If there are any extra subjects delete them. Go to the get links file. We need link to access the classroom. Alternate link key from the course dictionary contains the link to the classroom of the respective subject. We can see that each class has a link. Let me click a link and show you where it leads. We can see that it leads to a classroom link. Now we have to send this data to map.py file so, create a temp dictionary and store links as values to the name of the class so the class name and its respective link will be a key value pair. Return the temp dictionary. Go to map.py file and import the getlinks.py file. Call the main function which returns the temp dictionary and store it in courses dictionary. Let me print it. Here we can see that it gives the temp dictionary. We can see that the names are big which increases ambiguity so, let us map these names with alias names. For every course name in courses dictionary, we have to check whether that course is in our course alias dictionary. If not, go to the next item and make a new dictionary item where alias names are paired with respective links. Let me print it. Here we can see that alias name and the classroom link are a pair. Put this piece of code into get classes function which will return links and aliases data. We are not going to request API for classroom links every time we run the program as it takes time to get the response from it. So, we are going to save these aliases and links from get classes function in a JSON file. Open data.json file in write mode in order to save data dictionary. Import JSON module which contains dumps method. 
It converts the dictionary into a string, so it will be easy to write the data into the data.json file. Here we can see that the data.json contains the alias names paired with the class links. Put this piece of code into update links function. Whenever the function is called data.json will be updated. Now create main.py file where we are going to open the link automatically using web browser module. Import web browser module. Also import JSON module through which we can convert the JSON data into a Python dictionary using loads method. We can see that this file contains only one line so you have to read one line from the file and store it in a variable. Close the file. Use loads method from JSON to convert the string into a dictionary. Let me just print it. We can see that the string is converted into a dictionary. Import sys module. Sys module contains argv list where command line arguments are stored as list of strings. So, let us take the second parameter from the terminal as a subject name. Now we have to check whether the given command line argument is in the subject. We can see that the keys of the data dictionary contain subject names. We can get the keys from the data dictionary using keys method which returns list of keys of the dictionary. If it is in the subjects then open the link. So let us define an open class function, which takes URL as a parameter and opens the URL in a web browser. Data dictionary has the URL of the classroom which can be accessed by the subject name. Using web browser module we can open the classroom link of specified subject in the browser. Can see that the link is automatically opened. Now we are going to automate the process of clicking the meet link which is in the classroom. The following thing is completely optional you can use it if you wanted and I cannot guarantee that it will work every time. You can use Selenium for it, but that works only for the G Suite accounts, so I don't recommend it for everyone. Now we have to open the Meet link. In order to do that we are going to use PyAutoGUI. Import PyAutoGUI. There is a method called LocateCenter on screen which will try to recognize the position of an image on the screen where the image is given as the input. In this case, image will be this video button. This is how it looks like. Let me go back to the program and import time to make a delay between opening browser and clicking the link using sleep method. This method will return the X and Y coordinates of the image if it can find the image on the screen. Put grayscale parameter is true as it will increase the efficiency. After finding X, Y coordinates we generate click event using click method. After the web page is open wait for 10 seconds, and we can see that our program can recognize the button and clicked it. And now we have to link the main file to the batch file, with a simple batch script which will take a parameter from the command line and pass it to the main.py file. It worked well. This is how the application basically works. With some tweaks and exception handling, the code will looks like this. To use this program, first step is to download the credentials.json file. If you don't know how to get it, watch the second part of the video. Next, go to the GitHub link given in the description below and download the code. A zip file will be downloaded. After the file has downloaded, extract the file. We can see that a folder is extracted where all the code files are located. Copy the credentials.json file to that folder. Now open the folder in a code editor. We have to change few variables in these files. Go to get links.py file. We have to change the pwd variable here. Go back to the folder where the code is located and copy the path. Paste it in the pwd folder and add backslash to every backslash in that string and add two backslashes at the end. Now go to the class.bat file and do the same thing.
Open a terminal in the code editor or out of the code editor as your wish and execute. Class U. For the first time a web page will be displayed where you need to sign in with your Google account which has the access to the Google Classroom and allow the API to get the data from your account. You have to do this only once remember not to share your credentials or token file with anyone. You can change the page size in order to modify the number of subjects that should be returned. Now go to map.py file. The courses that are printed should be mapped to the alias names. I recommend you to use simple alias names. Then go to main.py file and modify the subject's dictionary. Only change the list elements according to your timetable. The final thing to do is adding this path to environmental variables. It makes this application available globally. Go to edit environmental variables, click on environmental variables. We can see that there is a variable called path. Double click it, click on new and paste the path. Now open the terminal and try to execute the commands. The commands are working. Recently our channel has reached 100 subscribers. Thank you for everyone who is supporting this channel. Keep supporting don't forget to share this video with your classmates and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Meet you in the next video. Have a great day.